Okay. Are we ready for this? I'm not ready for this. I am not ready for you guys to be upset that your favorite 3D printer didn't rank as high on this list as you thought it should, but that's all right. We're going to do this. I'm ready. Every 3D printer that I have ever had my hands on is going to be ranked on the ultimate 3D printer tier list from S to F. Now, I should clarify that this is not so much a grading as it is a ranking. That is to say, this isn't like in school where there's a line drawn and theoretically everybody could get an A. No, this is king of the mountain and there's only so much room at the top. And so if, if your favorite 3D printer doesn't rank as high as you think it should, that's not because it's bad. That's because there were simply objectively better 3D printers, more well-rounded for the price or for the capability. And so it's not, it's not a knock on a 3D printer that it shows up low on the list necessarily. Let's jump into it. The first thing I need to bring your guys' attention to is the graveyard. There have been and are a number of 3D printers that I have used and some of them I'm still using that you cannot buy anymore. So I have to put those in the graveyard, but they might inform future decisions. So I want to make you aware of them. Those 3D printers are the Dobot Moose 3-in-1 3D printer the Raise 3D N2 Plus, and the Degama Neva 3D printer. With the graveyard out of the way, let's start at the bottom and see who came in at the F rank. Starting out the F tier, and a surprise to no one, is the M3D Micro Plus. Just a mess of a 3D printer, and you know what? Nothing more needs to be said about that one. Next is the Start 3D printer or the Tron XY100, a $100 3D printer kit, also on the F list. The WeDo F192, a fun 3D printer name to say, and a 3D printer that wasn't incapable of doing some really cool things, but one that just didn't deliver well enough for, especially for the price. Next, we have the XYZ Printing Da Vinci Color Again, not a surprise to a lot of people. I think a lot of people are going to see it on this list and go, yeah, of course. While it does have some unique capabilities among 3D printers, in particular, printing in full color, for the price that it delivered and for the pain that it was to use, it just didn't rank that high on this list. And lastly, there's the Zortrax M200 Plus. Again, this 3D printer has the unique capability of being the only 3D printer I've ever used that when you use their filament and their slicer on their printer, it can 3D print Legos. Lego bricks that can actually mesh not only with other 3D printed Lego bricks, but with like commercially bought, store bought Lego bricks that is amazing. It is the most accurate 3D printer I've ever used, but way overpriced. And that build plate was such a pain to use that it just tanked it for the ease of use. Now, I will say that if you are in a commercial situation and you need accurate 3D printers, I would look to Zortrax because they have accurate 3D printers. Maybe not the M200. They now have the 300. So maybe one of those printers would work better. Moving on to the D tier, we're starting out with the Creality CR30. And, and I hate that this one is so low on the list because I have great hopes for what the CR30 can do and the, the great things that it can do for the future of 3D printing. I'll be talking about that in a future video. Just recognize that it pains me to see this on the list so low. It deserves better, it deserves better. Next is the longer LK4 Pro, and yeah, I gotta admit, I'm, I'm kind of not sad that it's at the D tier. It was salvageable with a lot of upgrades. Next is the longer Cube 2, ooh, longer, bringing in the D ranking all over the place. Sorry, guys, but yeah, the Cube 2 was not a great 3D printer. In fact, I recently had a chance 
to revisit it and I couldn't even get the dang thing to print after it's been sitting on my shelf for a little while. Lastly on the D list, one that may surprise some people, the Ultimaker 2 Plus. I actually use this 3D printer regularly at the Makerspace, but I gotta admit that for the price that they're asking and for what it delivers, Moving on to C rank, starting out the C list, the Creality Ender 5. Yeah, I feel that's about right. Next, the Flash Forge Creator Max. This is a dual nozzle 3D printer, but it's not IDEX. The two nozzles are locked together, so you get a lot of drooling. It's a great printer and, and highly capable, not a very large build volume, but yeah, I don't feel bad about where it's at. Longer is back on the list this time with their LK1 and it seems interesting to me that the LK1 ranked higher than the LK4 but yeah that really was my experience with it. Still it needs a lot of upgrades, a lot of work. It's it's their Ender 3 clone and it's okay but I, yeah this is where it belongs. Next is the Wanhao Duplicator 6. Interesting that it's directly above the Ultimaker 2 because the Wanhao Duplicator 6 is basically an Ultimaker 2 clone, but with some modifications and a better price. And lastly, on the C rank, there is the Dagoma Magus. Now, I should mention, you take a look at this one, it's a slightly different background color. That's because I have not gotten my hands on the Dagoma Magus, but I'm using the Dagoma Neva, which I'm pretty sure they simply made some slight tweaks to and rebranded and called it the Magus to inform my decision of what this 3D printer should be based on what the manufacturer has produced in the past. Is that accurate? It could be off a little bit. That's why I've designated it as a slightly different color. But if that's correct, this is where it would sit in the ranking. Now we're coming up to the B tier 3D printers. These are good 3D printers, generally speaking, and starting off the list, the Prusa MK2S kit. I, I, I know, I know, just give me a second. Give me a second, because this is not the last we'll hear about this printer on this list, and I want to discuss it later, so just, just hold off for just one second. Let's, let's finish the rest of the B tier. Next is the Flash Forge Adventurer 4. You notice we haven't seen the Adventurer 3 yet? Mm. The Flash Forge Creator Max 2. This is their IDEX 3D printer. It's like the Creator Max, but they broke the heads apart and put them on each independent head. And honestly, I'm still using this 3D printer. Like right now, it's printing. This is one of my workhorse 3D printers. So I feel good about it being in the B rank. I wish it were a little bit higher. And speaking of IDEX 3D printers, we've got the JG Maker Artist D. Now I hear that JG Maker has an upgraded version with an improved user interface and if it doesn't lose anything that version might be an A tier printer but here it is on the B tier. And then finishing out the B tier we have the Monoprice Select Mini V2. A few years back I was really into these printers. $200 fully assembled and just a capable printer. Love them. I think it definitely belongs on the B tier. However, in recent years, we've seen some new 3D printers come out that, well, let's move on to the A tier. Ooh, we're coming up on the A ranking. And you might notice that the A tier is a little bit fatter than the other tiers. That's because there's a lot of ways that a 3D printer can get into the A tier. First of all, it can be at the top of the list overall, or it can be at the top of the list if we're only considering two of the possible three arms on our ranking. So if it's the best for both price and capability, but we're not considering ease of use, or if it's the best for capability and ease of use, but we're not considering price, which might be valuable to some people, or if it is the best of the best in any one of those categories. Now, to be fair, most of the 3D printers, when considered on only two or one axis, were already high on the ranking just in general. So there weren't a whole lot getting boosted. But when they do, I'll let you know about the ones that are getting boosted. Starting out the A tier for us is the Kaiwu 3D Tycoon Max. Not the original Tycoon. This is its slightly bigger, although slightly shorter, brother. 
And it's a great 3D printer. It has all the advantages of the Kaiwu Tycoon, just a slightly different price and a slightly different build volume. Next, we've got the Flash Forge Adventurer 3. There it is sitting in A tier right where it belongs. Oh, I still love the Flash Forge Adventurer 3. And then there's the unfortunately named JG Maker A5S. Now, had I been making this list by hand without looking at the numbers, I might have been tempted to move this 3D printer lower on the list to make room for other 3D printers that I, I might have considered more worthy or that I use more. But by the numbers, the JG Maker A5S is an A tier 3D printer. Then there's the Mingda D2, an Ender 3 clone by Mingda that a lot of people are absolutely loving. This one is in the hands of uh, Jarvan Moss, and I asked him what had happened to it since the review, and he said, well, a part on it broke, and I handed it to somebody to fix, and they've got it now. Uh, pretty common for Ender 3 clones to, after a short time, fall apart and require repairs. So keep that in mind, but overall, by the numbers, a ranking 3D printer. Now, Weedoo is back on the list with the Tina 2. This is a mini 3D printer that, honestly, I was impressed with and so impressed with that it was between this and the Cube 2. I had a family member who was like, I want to get into 3D printing, and I'm like, cool, let me send you with this mini 3D printer. I tried out the Cube 2. It didn't work. So I hastily grabbed the Weedoo Tina 2 and tried it out, and it just sprung to life and worked great. And I felt confident handing this to people who had no idea, who had never done 3D printing before. That, I think, speaks volumes for this 3D printer. Next, here it is, people. The Prusa Mark III S Assembled. 3D printer. Yes, I told you it was coming back on the list, and it's in the A tier, and it deserves to be in the A tier. Now, again, it's got the background color of, I haven't actually used this one, but I think it's pretty easy to crunch the numbers and say, yeah, this is basically the one that I have, minus the difficulty of putting it together, plus a little bit more in the money. And even with a decreased price ranking, the increased ease of setup in the ease of use category definitely puts this on the A ranking, which I think speaks to the question of should you buy the kit or should you buy the assembled one? Is the kit worth the money? By the numbers, the assembled 3D printer is a better experience even for the price. And yeah, I'm 100% feeling that. So I'm, I'm great with the way these two 3D printers landed on this list. Next, there's the Raze Pro 2 Plus. And again, this is a, I haven't actually had my hands on one, but I use the Raze N2 Plus in the makerspace almost every day. This thing has been a workhorse for three years, four years. It, it just keeps on going and it's a great, great, great machine. So I can really easily say, okay, let's, let's take the price. Let's move all those numbers over. Maybe a little boost in ease of use because they're adding some things to the Pro 2 Plus, like filament out detection and stuff like that, that I wish the N2 Plus had. And this is where it would theoretically fall. Now I should mention also though, that this one did not get here on overall score, just on capability and ease of use score. So if money is no object, I do recommend this 3D printer. Though I wish they had an IDEX offering. Next on this list is the Creality Ender 3. And you might be looking at it and going, why is the background purple? Well, that's because this is another one that had to get a boost to get into the A. Overall, it was a B ranking. But if we ignore the ease of use on this 3D printer and just look at it from capability and price perspective, it is the highest capability price 3D printer. But I gotta admit, the Ender 3, not an easy 3D printer to use. You're gonna always be fiddling with it. You're gonna always be trying to fix it. So it's in the A ranking provisionally. Then there's the Easy 3D K7. And, and this 3D printer impresses me because it works. It shouldn't even work, but you'll notice it's got that provisional color on it. That is because, yes, it only got in here because it was the lowest priced 3D printer 
Does it deserve to be an A ranking? I mean, it works. If a 3D printer doesn't work, it doesn't even make it onto the list. So it does work and it's got a great price. So here you go. Overall, I could have wished for more, but as far as it delivered on what it promised, so here it is. And lastly, there's the Creality CR10S, a 3D printer which I haven't used in a very long time, but crunching the numbers, it gets onto the list. I think I had to ignore, I don't remember if it was ease of use, something had to be ignored in order to get it on the list. And I don't remember why, but yeah, it, it, it got a boost. Not It wasn't a great overall score, but it deserved to be on there. Here it is, folks, the tip of the tier ranking. What are the 3D printers that are going to be the very best of the best. First of all, there's the Kaiwu Tycoon, which, yes, this was the 3D printer that started me on this quest of grading 3D printers in a different way because I couldn't believe that I was giving it such a good ranking based on the comparative score. And so I went, oh, and, and, and it's still, after all of that, after redoing my grading score so that I was sure that I wasn't just giving this one a score that it didn't deserve. It still came out at the very tip top of my ranking. This 3D printer is impressive. You pull it out of the box, you put four screws together, and it's 3D printing as accurately and as cleanly, dare I say it, as the Prusa with an even bigger build volume and a much lower price. That is to say, it's priced lower than the kit and yet prints as well as it all put together and you don't have to put it together. I cannot praise this 3D printer enough and it's a 3D printer that I think is getting overlooked by a lot of people and I really encourage you to check it out. But we're not done with the S tier because there is one other entry that honestly surprised me that it was even on this list, but the Toy Box 3D printer. This is probably going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. I mean, how could a 3D printer that's that's this low in capability and, and one that runs on a web service, how could it be an S tier 3D printer? Well, take a look. It's right here. I am using this 3D printer all the time. And because it's so easy to use, just ridiculous ridiculously easy to use and at the right price its overall score the area of that triangle came in only slightly lower than the Kai Wu. I, I was impressed and surprised to see it here myself but it just goes to show that the right price and some really good features make an overall excellent experience for the user. So there it is, my tiered ranking of all 3D printers that I've ever used. What do you think? Did your favorite 3D printer really get the shaft on this one? Did it deserve better? Why or why not? You know what? The comments for this one, I think, are just going to be a lot of fun to read. So I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say down there. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. Man, this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description, and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and see you next time. <laughs>